Fluid simulation can be one of the trickiest thing to do in Blender, but if it works, it's amazing. So in this video, I'll show you how to master this tricky craft called fluid simulation. Step one, water collision. Select an object you want the water to collide with and go to the physics properties. There, select fluid and switch the type to effector. Then increase the sampling substeps a bit. Now just do that for all the objects that should have collision. The next step is the water emitter. So select the object you want to emit fluid and go to object, quick effects and quick liquid. If you want the liquid to continuously flow into the scene, switch the flow behavior to inflow. For planar emitters, you'll have to check this is planar checkbox. Afterwards, scale up the fluid domain to cover everything the fluid should reach because it can only exist within this box. Then right click and select origin to geometry. After that go to object, apply and hit scale. Step 3 is the domain settings. Set the resolution to 64 and enable mesh. In the cache section you can either switch the type to all and that will let you bake all the different sections with one click. Or you can switch it to modular which will let you bake each section individually and that will give you a bit more flexibility. Then enable AC resumable and bake. Now after baking the fluid will most likely pass through some collision objects. So to fix that you can do a couple of things. First you can check if the normals point the right way by going to the overlays panel and enabling phase orientation. If you see red on the side where the fluid is supposed to collide, you have to go to the edit mode and recalculate normals. Second, if your mesh has no thickness, give it some by extruding and then fixing the normals. The last option, if all that didn't help, then you can increase the surface thickness in the fluid effector settings to something like this. All right, now if I bake, we can see the domain fills up with more and more water. So to fix that, add an object and give it the outflow flow behavior. Then keyframe the use flow checkbox to enable the, I describe it as a water drain at the point where you want the fluid not to increase anymore. You can tweak the amount of water that drains by scaling the outflow up or down. Okay, the simulation looks good now, so let's tweak the domain settings for the final bake. First, increase the resolution to the highest your computer can handle. So minimum 128, but 256 or higher is better. Afterwards, enable the spray, foam and bubble particles. We'll create the objects for those particle systems right after baking. Then in the mesh section, enable the speed vector checkbox to be able to use motion blur using the vector paths because the normal motion blur doesn't work. Then set the cache type to unicache. Also make sure you have enough disk space because these simulations can get just, just a little bake. And bake. All right, that's done. So now let's move on to making the spray, foam and bubble particles, as well as tweaking the water material. For the spray, add in a sphere with four segments and four rings and give it a glass shader with an IOR of 1.333. For the foam and bubbles, add another sphere and give it this shader. Then select them in their respective particle systems and tweak their scale and scale randomness. Next, the water shader. Here we'll just have to reduce the saturation of the volume absorption color. And now the sim is done. But what if your computer isn't able to render it because it's so high res? Well, you can do three things. First, check if the render will start with the simulation particles disabled and if yes then you can try to decimate the spray, foam and bubble particles even more. Or you could also do a thing where you just put a spray or foam texture onto a flat plane which then only has four vertices and use that but you'll have to figure that out for yourself. And if that doesn't help you can move on to the second option which is to reduce the number of particles by reducing the wave crest and grab air particle sampling. God. That line took a lot of effort to record. And third, if it still won't render, you'll just have to reduce the resolution. I'm sorry. Now lastly, we'll just add some motion blur in the compositor. So enable the Z depth and vector render passes and re-render. Then in the compositing tab, check use nodes and add a vector blur node. Now just plug the vector into the speed socket, the Z depth into the Z socket and the image into the image. Then tweak your blur amount up here to your liking. And if you have some weird blur in the particles like this, then just tweak the max speed value right here. Lastly, enable curve, which will just make the blur look a little bit nicer. And now the water has motion blur, but that's it. If this video helped you at all, then I'm sure you'll find this video helpful as well.